Hello everyone, this is Rocco coming at you for a, another full self-driving video. This is going to be a 12.3.4 and as per the title, it is going to be our crazy hill test. Um, if you notice through the windshield, we have something different. You might or might not see, and you can't tell from the camera. You can see the line right there. I have a kayak on the roof. I just picked this up yesterday, if you saw my previous video. Um, we have, unfortunately, did not have a chance to try it. Water uh, try it yesterday afternoon, we ran out of time, and um, this uh, today is 50 degrees out and rainy, and this wasn't conducive to getting out on the water and being comfortable. Um, so, we're gonna do a different test to where it is very, very, very calming for kayakers to go down this road. The Green River is down there, it is an extremely popular kayaking place for whitewater kayaking. This is a fishing kayak, so we're not going to do that. Um, but we are going to go down. We're not taking the kayak off. We're just going to go down, you know, see how the car handles with a kayak on top. I haven't noticed. I did some highway driving just to make sure everything was stable. I haven't noticed any stability issues or autopilot changes or full cell driving changes with this line in front. The line I have in rear goes to the top of the trunk up, so it's not blocking any cameras. The only camera that is impeded is this one right here. Uh, the the narrow focus has the bow of the boat. Uh, see, you can see the map data is screwing it up. Uh, the bow of the boat in the way of it. I don't think that's really going to affect anything. That would only affect maybe at lights, which I don't know if I've actually. I don't think I've actually gone on a route yet with this with lights. Maybe next week we'll do that. Uh, this is auto speed, of course, and we are in rain, as you can tell. So the roads are wet and it is a light rain right now. All day long it's been raining. This is going way slower than I would go, but maybe perhaps it's because of the rain. Maybe it's going slower because of that. And maybe it's because it has something in its field of view, perhaps. But what we're looking for is that, you know, does somehow having this extra mass on top of the car, we're talking 62 pounds plus the ratchet strap, I don't know, 70, 70 pounds on top of the car. Uh, different from what I normally have would that affect anything and I guess I don't remember the last version it was one I think it was version 12 I did this on and already so far I have to say that um, let's go ahead and get this camera up so you can see the side cameras it is doing a much better job staying away from the rail like this is pretty good I think we'll see how close it gets here yeah yeah, this is pretty good. I think I might be a smidge over to the left personally, just because if there's no cars coming, why not? But otherwise it's doing much better than the previous version in terms of getting too close to the right. And then going on here is great too. Eventually I will be going down this route, probably with a trailer at some point. We'll video that. And that is gonna be a whole new level. Um, give me a comment down below if you would like to see. It almost went off the road there. Okay, sorry, I had to pay attention real quick. Give me a comment down below if you want to see this route with a trailer. I might decide to do it one day. I might go this route down to uh, a uh, lake access. It's only 20 minutes away. And yeah, just to try out, try the kayak and try how it goes. It's just a lot easier to load this kayak on a trailer than it is on the roof. I can be sure of that. You don't have to strap it down there as much and you just pull it right off. You don't have to worry about scraping up the car. But unfortunately, trailers make it much more difficult to fit in places. Which is why a cyber truck would come and make a use for something like this. Slide into the back of the truck, single ratchet strap, you're good to go. But otherwise, this is doing extremely well. I'm not having any, not have seen any problems so far. Stuff like this on the right is staying closer to the left, which is good. It's being cautious of any traffic that might come around. It is doing good. Now the key key spot is going to be: is it going to mess up on the map? I don't know if I can find. I think it was right here in this corner. Right here is where it messed up last time. The map data is so weird. And there's a driveway that goes up one of the corners right there. 
and it thought it was the main road. And so it just decided to launch itself up the road. So this is noticeably changed. Okay. Car got too close to a drop off on the right edge. I wish I had the camera up to see, but that felt like only a couple inches away. Obviously we met on a car here. We'll see if we meet on any cars going up the mountain. So that, like, in this area, I'm just not gonna, like, if I fall off the edge, I'm screwed. I might bottom out and not be able to get out. Well, I am rear wheel drive, so if the front falls off, I might be still good. But that's not something I'm gonna risk. Just not something I'm gonna risk. See, this super wide turn here, there's also some, see it's go, where's it going? Why is it going so fast now? It was going slow the entire way. And all of a sudden now it's going fast because I re-enabled it. Go ahead and tell it to slow down because it shouldn't be going that fast. And one advantage is it is staying a little bit further to the left though not far enough on that one section. And that makes a big difference. It's like this is all of a sudden like a different car driving now that I re-enabled it. It's staying further to the right now, which doesn't make any sense. I think it's seeing the weeds or yeah, the, the growth, plant growth on the right side of the road there. And it's uh it stayed a little bit further left. Like this is rather smooth, considering. Like it's what's what it's doing right now is not good because it's starting to speed up too fast. It, for it to be smooth, it can't speed up that fast. Cause I know, I hit doesn't necessarily know, but I know it's gonna need to slow back down. Like almost like immediately as it speeds back up, which is what makes it not comfortable to a passenger. And it might be because the boat in the in the way of one of the cameras blocks a little bit of the forward facing view and maybe that's why it's more hesitant or something I don't know like it's obviously doing pretty well everyone but um, as you can see there it's like three inches away from the edge too close it has no reason to be that close to the edge like we're really close to the edge right here and as you can see I, I don't have the, the 360 camera on should have stated that from the beginning but that is uh, Hopefully obvious reasons. I have a kayak on the roof and there's no good place to mount it. Uh, I couldn't mount it on the windshield. That, I almost disengaged again. This is where it messed up last time. See this driveway up here? They got it this time because it was going slower. I think that's a big, big thing is the, on a road like this, the car needs to, just to go, go this speed. Like it, it could go a little bit faster, you know, to 20 mile an hour right in this spot. But it doesn't need to go as fast as it was going at 25 mile an hour. It's too fast. And again, too close to the edge of the road. Okay, everyone, I probably could have got away with that disengagement, but it made me uncomfortable and I wasn't going to risk it. So the way down, we had the one disengagement. Now let's see if we're going to make it all the way back up. Oh yeah, I did say um, we are going to, I told someone that I would do this parking lot. So let's see how it does this parking lot. Because if it goes too fast, obviously I'm going to disengage. But uh, we're not going to count the parking lot yet because this is a gravel parking lot. It's not It's not designed to do this yet. So come on. Route, route, route before someone shows up behind me. So it's going slow enough. Could go just a tiny bit slower, but I think this is acceptable. Oh, 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 oh can't figure it out. Haha. 
Okay. Well, actually, if it wants to go out of this other exit, I guess I can. It's having to figure out where to go. <laughs> this is kind of funny. It just has a wide open gravel parking lot it has to figure out. Is it gonna make it? It's sensing an exit. It found the exit. And it found, <laughs> it found the right way, that's incredible. As long as you don't get too close to the edge. Wow. That was actually really impressive, everyone. Thanks, um, thanks to the commenter who uh, asked me to do that. I'm glad, I'm glad you reminded me to do that. It's really awesome. This guy and dog are having one heck of a run. All the way up. Hopefully they see this car right here. Yeah. But, um, we'll see if we have um, a head-on car, if we meet a car at one of the turns. So I think this is appropriate speed. It could be going a little bit faster right now since this road isn't very curvy right now. But I think this is very appropriate. I would rather it stay at this speed instead of going faster. Last time we got really close to hitting this bridge. And I didn't realize until right after. And it's almost about the same right there. It's maybe an inch to the left. So it's still too far to the right right there. I'm just hopeful that they're gonna fix that on, on the next version. I, I'm guessing they're gonna have to get training data where people are used to driving in this area and don't get too close to the right edge and aren't about to fall off the road. They've done, they've done a pretty dang good job on this road compared to the early versions. Uh, because the road is wet, I don't know if you could hear the traction control kick in. Wow, it's going. That's surprising how fast that was going right there, turning the wheel back and forth like a human driver. Like these left turns, are easy peasy. These turns are easy for the car. It's the right turns that are difficult. And have you have another car? No problem. If it wasn't already obvious by the speed limit, I don't know if I mentioned this before, it's not 45 on this road. That is not the speed limit. It's 45 on the previous road and there was no speed limit sign. I'm pretty sure the speed limit is 25, I think, what the speed limit is on this road. 20 maybe, something like that. It's not more than 25 on this road. These are always the hairpin turns that are always gonna be a problem. That was good. That was about as far right as, it, as I was comfortable letting it go because the car will, my car is so low to the ground, it will bottom out going around that corner. I do wonder how a Cybertruck's going to do on this. As you can see, it got extremely close to the edge right there. All these spots are like eight inch holes, like six plus inch holes on the side of the road right here. If you fall off the side of the road, you bottom out, like the battery tray will hit the ground. That is really important, it does not do it, that the only vehicle Tesla makes is a Cybertruck that could have potentially, oh my goodness, too fast. Because that's the thing, if you're going that fast and you meet another car, you don't have applicable response time. The, 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 well, my car might, like from a computer standpoint, but the other car doesn't. The other car doesn't have the near the response time that I do. So it's going too fast around that blind turn. And the faster you go, the more likely you are to bottom out around that curve. This road will absolutely have a high probability of, of RoboTaxi having an issue. I would never let my car, at least for the first, unless it's done this perfectly, like 20 plus times, I'm probably not gonna let it do this autonomously. Autonomously, uh, it's just it's unless it gives me confidence on every single turn that it is not gonna stay too far to the right and potentially bottom like you know ruin my suspension, pop a tire, get me stuck. 
then I'm not, I'm not gonna trust it. It has to give me the confidence that it's not going to mess up and not go too fast around this corner and all that type of stuff. Like this was pretty good. You can felt felt it lost a lot of attraction. This is bad. Again, it accelerates just to get up to this next turn and slows back down again. And that's what gives you, makes your car sick. I'm getting a little bit car sick right now because of that. Now this is better. It's two two noticeable. Ow, I spit myself. Two noticeable things that are better about this version than the previous one. One, it didn't drive off the road, um, mess up. Um, like, look how close. An inch. It had one inch of room right there. It needs to have more buffer. It didn't uh, try and go on that driveway. That was the first main fix. The other thing is, it's my, my last video is titled Speed Racer. It is not doing Speed Racer on this one. Uh, it is not doing near the speed as it was last time. Now, is it going too fast still? Yes, in some areas. But most of that is corrected. Like this, right here, too fast. It just accelerates just for it to slow back down again. I would accelerate up to 27 and slow back down to 10. It should have accelerated up to maybe 22, 20, somewhere in that range, and went down to like 12. So it, like, the gap was too much. Uh, let's see, ah, if we were just a little bit ahead. Oh, really? I'm pressing the accelerator. Well, which is odd. It, it, it did that because it lost traction. It was on a very steep incline, and it lost traction, and it freaked it out. So hopefully, all right, I didn't get the chance to, why don't we um, just snapshot, maybe that'll get them some data from that. But um, obviously, it's not a forced disengagement. It would have made that. Obviously, it did because I pressed the accelerator to force it to keep going, and it made it just fine. Uh, but yeah, it uh, obviously messed up there. So oh, it obviously just it, it wasn't okay with that. So Tesla, hopefully, I'm guessing the system abort errors they get uploaded to logs to Tesla. That, that's that's good, like an automatic red flag in the system and it uploads those logs. So hopefully Tesla gets this and reviews it. If you guys are watching this video, again, I appreciate all the crazy hard work you're putting into this. This is gonna help so many lives, especially like even including mine, like a self, selfish plug here. But um, yeah, because it's just, when I, when I started driving, I wasn't very comfortable driving um, and there's a lot of areas I'm still not comfortable. If I'm in a new area, like if I were to go to drive in New York City, I could do it. It wouldn't be a problem doing it. Do I want to do it? Do I, do I, I don't want to drive in New York City. Well, do I want to visit New York? Yeah, but I don't want to have to drive there. I'd rather just someone else drive that knows how to do it. So if a robot actually just knows how to drive in New York City, I'm gonna let it drive. Do you like it just ever so slightly drove off the road right there. So, we had like what one in a maybe disengagement again it's basically i would still say this is an improvement over the previous version because it's not going so fast and it didn't mess up going off the road like that time you know it and i'm pretty sure the only the first disengagement wasn't necessary i was just being overly cautious because guess what i don't want to drive it off the road so uh that's just how it happened and the system report error unfortunately that's what happened if you're in a robo taxi that's just what's gonna happen Okay, guys, um, that's going to be the end of this video. Um, sorry I couldn't get more of the um, outside of the car going. But, uh, yeah, if you have any questions for me, uh, go ahead and put comments down below, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye, everyone.